Welcome to this edition of Prostate Cancer Weekly, where our aim is to help men whose prostate biopsy shows cancer make the right decision that will assure the highest possible quality of life and the best chance of long-term survival. I am not a medical doctor and I am in no way offering you medical advice. You should consult your doctor before making any final decision. This week, I want to talk about your PSA test. By now, I'm sure most of you have had one or you would not be watching this show. However, just in case, PSA stands for Prostate Specific Antigen. And PSA is made by prostate cells and is released into the bloodstream. Large prostates produce more PSA. So a rise in PSA means that the gland is enlarging, which can be a sign of cancer, BPH, or that the prostate is irritated by infection or some other cause. What I wanted to warn you about is there are several other factors that can affect the results of a PSA test, and it is important to keep them in mind, as they can affect your decision to biopsy or not, as well as decisions when you're monitoring if you're practicing active surveillance or watchful waiting. Also, it can have an effect on calculating your PSA density, your PSA doubling time, and your PSA velocity results. First, according to an article on the new Prostate Cancer InfoLink, entitled, If It Is Thursday It Must Be, your PSA levels may vary as much as 5% depending on simply the day of the week. Apparently, research has suggested that PSA levels may demonstrate both daily and seasonal variations. So realize that PSA is not an exact science. It's more like an estimate, and it'll vary from test to test. I chart my tests and go with more of an average or a range rather than exact numbers. For more details, go to prostatecancerinfolink.net and search for If It Is Thursday, It Must Be. Next, did you know there's a difference in PSA assays or tests? As such, it is prudent to have a patient get their PSA measurements at the same laboratory on a consistent basis to avoid this variation. I received a DVD from zerocancer.org that goes into great depth about the importance of finding out which type of assay standard your lab uses and how it can affect the results by as much as 22%. It starts out with a brief history about PSA that in 1986 PSA was approved by the FDA for monitoring purposes only. Then in 1994 the FDA approved it for actual detection of prostate cancer. Somewhere in the late 80s, it was determined that PSA test results were not always the same. So, in the early 90s at Stanford University, they created a new standardized assay test called the Hybritex standard. Then, in the late 90s, the World Health Organization adopted a new standard assay test called the WHO standard test, or WHO standard test. The idea was to reduce confusion over the tests. However, it actually backfired and has caused even more confusion because the results of the new WHO test are approximately 20% lower than those obtained with the original Hybertech standard. So, you need to be aware that if different labs process your blood samples, you could get different results. Typically, this might not be a problem for men who have a test done in the same lab. But, if you move to a new area, change insurance, or send out a sample for a second opinion that is done at a different lab, it could be an issue. For example, a man gets a test of 3.2 from a lab that uses the Hybertech test. A year later, he has moved or changed insurance or doctors and gets another test that is from a different lab that uses the WHO test. The result comes back 3.2. 
Well, at first glance, it appears to be fine. However, it is actually closer to a 4 on a Hybrick test and therefore has risen by a whole point. But because it appears the same, a biopsy is not done and could affect the eventual outcome of the man's early diagnosis of prostate cancer. A rise of more than 0.75 in a year should trigger a biopsy, but in this case, it would be missed. This also has an effect across the board, as most clinical studies done in the early days gave cutoffs of four on the PSA test to trigger a biopsy. Most of the early trial results were established using the Hybertech standard. Many practitioners still use four as the trigger. So with the adoption of the WHO standard, when a WHO test returns a result of three to four, a biopsy is not usually triggered. This means that as many as 500,000 men have scores that would be erroneously considered to be normal by the WHO results of less than four, but would be elevated using the Hybertech standard. According to the prostate cancer prevention trial results, these 500,000 men have a 25% chance of having prostate cancer, and at least one quarter of these could be aggressive cancers. So that means of the 500,000 men, 125,000 could have cancer and 31,000 could have an aggressive form of prostate cancer. Now that we know about this, what should we do? Well, first, the medical community, as well as patients, need to be aware of the difference and proceed accordingly. Second, find out which test your lab is using to determine the correct cutoffs of three for the WHO test and four for the Hypertech. Third, realize that mixing these two tests will adversely affect PSA density, PSA doubling time, and PSA velocity results. Fourth, if you have changed doctors, insurance companies, or moved, you need to contact the labs involved to ascertain if different tests have been administered and how it may affect your specific situation. To find out more, go to drcatalona.com, drcatalona.com, or zerocancer.org, and search PSA standardization. In addition to the above factors, there are several other factors that can affect your PSA test results. But unfortunately, we are out of time for today's show. So be sure to watch the next edition of Prostate Cancer Weekly for more pertinent information. Thanks for watching our show today. I hope in some way we are able to help you on your journey to making the right treatment decision. If you liked our show, please visit our website at prostatecancerweekly.com and click on the subscribe button so that you'll be sure to get our weekly email with a link to our next show. Thanks again and see you next time.